So good morning, everyone. I'm from um, the, the Chinese University of Hong Kong, the Department of Physics. And today I'm going to um, talk to you another challenge of, uh, you know, in this big um, data science era. And we've tried to uh, extract information about a system that we're interested from all the data that we collected. So in particular, um, I'm going to tell you that we have, can think of these uh, complicated systems as networks. And then we want to get information about the structure namely the interaction among these different nodes and also the coupling strength of the uh, interaction from the data that we and collected from the nodes. So um, this will be the outline of my talk. Basically, we'll first we'll introduce to you uh, the particular problem that we have of interest. And as I said, we want to uh, get information about this uh, complicated uh, system that we can think of, can be thought of as a network of different uh, individual units we call nodes, and then also the interaction that we call the links. And we want to get all these uh, in interaction patterns from the measurements. And first, we will try to develop the method. So basically, I want to um, tell you that we can derive some um, mathematical relations about the um, measurements and also the network structure that we're interested and in particular systems usually are interact, um, acted by noise. So these relations will be actually because of the, the presence of noise. So first part will be to tell you the, our uh, method that we developed and we also uh, talk about when there's so-called so hidden nodes that when the information is not complete so what we can say and finally I want to tell you our more recent work that we applied our method to a real world uh, problem. So this uh, work is done together with a group of people uh, uh, for example, the first part when we developed the method is done together with a collaborator in a national central university in Taiwan and also some former students. And then the real world part will be with uh, also some students, okay, different students. So think about this, we, we want to understand the system and then in, in physics and in biology and also in social science actually, there are many there are such systems that you have many individual uh, units, they interact with one another. So with they can naturally be um, described as a network. And these individual elementary units will be the nodes, and then the uh, interactions will be the, the, the links or the edges uh, that uh, connect them. So this is just to give you a picture. This is an a, 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 a um, example from biology. It's a protein-protein interaction network. And you can imagine that an important piece of information that we want to understand will be the, uh, how the, this individual uh, unit, these nodes are interacting. Because the overall behavior of the system will depend on, um, crucially on this uh, interaction pattern. So the information that we want to get is exactly this. We want to get the, uh, how the links, the nodes are linked to one another. So this is what I meant by the structure, the net connectivity structure. And also we want to know the coupling strength, the strength of the individual links. So because if they're linked, they're different strength, they also will have a different um, consequence. And you can see for you know, structures, they can have different organization of this uh, uh, connection among the, the nodes. So you, you imagine that the behavior of the system will depend rather crucially on how these nodes are being connected to one another. Okay? So and you can also imagine that there are a lot of data being collected, particular in, um, well, in science, both in science and social science. In science, mainly uh, will be in biology and also in social science, there are also social networks. So the challenge, uh, particularly relevant to this uh, symposium, will be you know, how to get information from all the measurements. And the measurements that we're interested in here is mainly the dynamics. So we can imagine we measure the individual nodes, we study the behavior, uh, measure some um, variables as a function of time, and this dynamical data, we want to get the structure from this dynamical data. And uh, one well-known uh, such problem will be this uh, brain network. So there are many ways to collect data. So for example, for in the case of the brain, you want to get uh, so you have measurements like you use the functional MRI, you measure different parts of the brains, and then take measurements as a function of time. And you want to get how the different parts are um, connected, and in particular, which part is involved in a certain functions. And in this related problem, we want to also know how the connectivity structure of the network will be depend on the dynamics. So again, the goal will be to infer the network structure from the dynamics of the nodes. So our approach will be the following. We start with a model, um, map, uh, model, model, model class of the system. 
And this model we are, well, so first the system has um, n nodes, n can be large, well, of the order of thousand. Well, n there's no restriction here. This big n is the number of the nodes in the system. And we are just assume that each node has one single variable for the very beginning, which is the simplest description. So there's a one state variable, xi. Xi, i of i will run from one to n. So Xi as a function of t. So imagine uh, in the case of, well, we'll, I'll tell you what, imagine just, just take some data, well, track that particular node, follow it through the time, you know, take some measurements, and that will be our Xi t. It's rather general, so it's a, uh, it's a time series. So, and this Xi in general, the system, of course, uh, this Xi, uh, you can really see that, there's a dot of above. So the, 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 um, the derivative of Xi with respect to t, so sorry about that, it doesn't show up here. So the derivative of xi about, uh, with respect to t, the derivative, will be given by this uh, couple set of ordinary differential equations. So first, there will be some function that describes so-called intrinsic dynamics of um, the node itself. And the more important thing is these interactions. So this sum will be the effect from the other nodes. So in particular here, so I will just, uh, we will just take the, this two-body interaction. So xi, the dynamics of xi will be affected by xj or J is other nodes. And so, uh, but obviously that may, might not be affected by all the nodes, but, but some of them. So which node is affecting Xi will be given by this adjacency matrix. So say Aij, if Xj is affecting Xi, then Aij will be one, otherwise it will be zero. And also the, this is uh, this coupling strength is given by this Gij. And we just assume some form of uh, coupling function, H. And actually we don't really need to know much about H, it's rather general. So. So the network structure is contains these two quantities. This Aij is a matrix telling you which i is interacting with which j, and also the strength is given by this Gij is again a scalar, but it depends on the individual pair of the nodes. And as I said, in most uh, well, real world problems, there will be some um, noise. Well, noise here essentially just means things external to the system, so ex external disturbance. So I'll just group them as an call this eight and i is noise. It can be um, different for different nodes. So that will be our starting uh, model uh, system. This is rather general. And so in general, uh, this is just terminology. Right? If Aij is not symmetric, we call it a directed network, meaning that you know, it depends on the direction of the interaction. And if Gij is not uniform, it's a weighted uh, network. So we are interested in the most general case, which is the directed one. This is asymmetric matrix, and also the Gij is uh, non-uniform. Okay. So the question will be, uh, can we get this Aij, Gij, which we are interested in, just from the things that we measure, which are the dynamics, in this case, is this AR Xit, which is all this time series. So for the time being, we assume we know everything about this. All, we know all the nodes. Uh, we'll talk about the so-called hidden nodes, cases when we don't know some of the nodes later. So for the moment, we assume that we know all the nodes. So that's the thing we, we know from measurements. We have all this Xit, i for all the nodes, 1 to n. And the question is how to use just this XIT and get the AIJ and GIJ that we are interested in. And, oh, sorry. So first thing is there, uh, uh, actually a, a few years back there's uh, some work and the surprise there is people usually think that noise is a bad thing. Noise is, uh, you know, the noise, we call them noise, it's disturbing our data, maybe mass of things, mass of things. But it turns out that in this case, uh, it has been uh, shown that the presence of noise will actually um, help us in the sense that it will give rise to some relation between the structure and dynamics. So this is the first uh, work uh, that is relevant to our, our earlier, the prior work, so it's a, about well, more than eight years ago. So in this work, they, was, they show that, uh, they present a re relation showing that in, um, in the presence of noise, you can get a relation between the, the, the measurements and the uh, GIJ, AIJ. But they only do it for a very simple case, so-called bidirectional, meaning the, the AIJ is symmetric and also unweighted, the G is just a constant, and for a very special kind of uh, dynamics is so-called con con consensus dynamics. So we, we act, uh, we're going to do a more general work, and we start with uh, the problem I just set up, but then we focus on a particular class of systems. So we focus on the case that this system, in the absence of noise, when there's no noise, then the solution of the system will be just a steady state, okay? Steady state, time independent. So for each node, the solution will be x, this big xi. And then in the presence of noise, then uh, of this obviously the system will be deviated from this steady state, but then it will be with some fluctuations. So what we 
do is we linearize this, the uh, equations around this um, steady state. And we will end up with this uh, linear stochastic um, dynamics. And then we try to derive exact results just from this for these linear systems. And these exact results for the linear systems will be good approximations for the case when there's noise, well, in the, at least in this case of weak noise. So you see here that we, if you linearize the system, then this is the, just the usual, you know, the stochastic uh, linear set of systems. And the key quantity here is this QIJ, this uh, matrix, QIJ. And the expression can be written explicitly here. And the important thing here is just focus on the um, off-diagonal elements of this Q. So you can see that the off-diagonal elements of this Q will be proportional to GIJ, AIJ. Okay, this H sub Y is the partial derivative of H with respect to the second variable. So it contains the information that we are interested in, this GIJ and AIJ. So the, the, the goal will be to get this Q and look at the off-diagonal elements and try to get the GIJ, AIJ. Okay? So, and again, we, our approach will be just to derive relations using, uh, I mean, derive relation, relation or mathematical results that relate the Q and also quantities that can be calculated using only XIT. And we also do it for general networks and noise, okay? So I just, um, not go through all the details, but just summarize the results here. So uh, uh, in the past five years or so, we have uh, worked on this problem. And we start with the, first we start with very simple, the, the simplest one with that uh, bidirectional network and, and, and also uniform coupling that is unweighted network. Then work, work up the ladder, you know, weighted network. And then finally to more general network. And also to, uh, we're beginning we work with the simplest kind of noise, which is the white noise. And then we also work with more uh, complicated noise, the correlated noise. So these are the two ki types of noise um, that we have worked on. White noise, you know, is delta correlated in time. And then the correlated noise with a finite correlation time tau n, and given here. And when tau n goes to zero, it will go back to our white noise limit. And so these are the, the references if you're interested. And so I'm going to just give you the summary of the results that we have derived. So basically, um, first we introduce this quantity, this covariance matrix, uh, with a time uh, lag. Oh, difference. So this k tau is a matrix, and then the uh, element ij element will be the um, average of the, this quantity given here, which is essentially the, the xj, you know, the, the, the deviation of xj from the mean, and the correlation of this x deviation of xj from the mean with xi, but xi is measured as a time uh, different from that measure by, uh, for xj. The time difference is exactly this tau. Okay, if tau is zero, this is just the usual covariance matrix. So now we, uh, we say that, we, we will, or I want to tell you that k tau is uh, important in general. So we just solve the, uh, as I just mentioned, solve the, this linearized stochastic dynamics, and we will get relations, or exact result for the linear system. And exactly, you will relating k zero, the case, the usual covariance matrix, when there's tau is, just, uh, the, the two are measured at the same time. And this k tau is with finite tau. And the Q, remember the Q, the quantity, uh, the matrix that contains the GIJ, AIJ that we are interested in. And then this D, D is just the, well, I, I, didn't, I didn't explain more. So when I define the noise, there's this D, D is the, um, the noise matrix, if you wish. It's just the covariance of the noise magnitude at a different uh, node. So we will get results relating these four quantities in general. So these are the two main results for uh, the, the two main results. So the first result will be um, involving only k0, okay? So k0, remember q, and then uh, the tau n is the, the, the correlation time of the noise, and then d is, i is the, the, the identity matrix. Okay, and I, I don't want, uh, you know, the, all these de the details will be given here. So, but the, the main thing is we can derive results, mathematical results, relation, except results, uh, for, the, uh, for the linearized system. So it's this k0 and k1. So, uh, k the, the result, result one involving only k0, and the result two will involve both k0 and k tau. So now I'm going to, uh, well, these are my results. We want to in, look at the implications. And in particular, I'm going to tell you two things, very important things. First thing is, we understand why uh, just using the covariance is not enough to get the information that we uh, are interested. So you may know that in, in the, this uh, field, some, some people, the first thing one can think of is use the covariance. So if xi, xt, the time two time series are correlated uh, a lot, then most likely they might be in, 
uh, linked, right? I, they, they, they connect. But I'm going to tell you that this is actually not correct. So k itself, first, it is not enough in general, and also uh, the information will not be related to k directly. And second thing, we will see that it is, uh, we need the both k tau and k to get the, uh, the method. To, to, we can use that result too to develop a method that for the general case. Okay, so I just mentioned, so now I'm just going to tell you that uh, why is um, k is not a good indicator. So actually, in, in the field of uh, say, uh, neuroscience, people already find that, you know, they, they, they look at the data, they find that sometimes the system naturally, they know that there is a lot of interaction, but just look at the coherence, it's actually have weak, very weak correlation. So there's a paper in Nature saying that, you know, this weak co correlation actually implies strongly uh, correlated or interacted, interacting network states. So we are going to tell you that this is very easy to understand using our result, why um, you can have case that you know you have weak correlations but actually they are strongly interacting. So the, that can be seen from this uh, result as I mentioned. So you can see this result involving only the K0, uh, this equation, this is matrix equation involving K0. And K0 obviously is a symmetric matrix. So but our matrix of interest, the, the, the Q or, or in the out, in the general case, the network, the Q remember again it will be related to our G and AIJ. So the adjacency matrix itself for the network of interest is uh, asymmetric. But your, your K0 is only a symmetric matrix. So then you, can, you don't have enough number of equations to, to get the, 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 the variables that you want. So basically, you can see immediately just from there that you, K0 does not contain, K0 alone will not con, does not contain uh, sufficient information for the reconstruction of a general uh, asymmetric cube. OK? And so that's the first thing. And that's why, uh, well, then you say, OK, suppose when we can use K0? Because I said, in for a general network, if you are interested in a uh, general network, the adjacency matrix is symmetric. Uh, uh, sorry, it's asymmetric. So the Q, uh, K0 does not contain enough information. So you will think that in the case of a simpler case, when we have bidirectional network, uh, when the, this adjacency matrix is uh, indeed uh, symmetric, maybe we have uh, hope to use K0 alone. So it turns out that the answer is actually uh, close. So if we have the simple case of a um, bidirectional network, that is when Q is symmetric. Well, first of all, when Q is symmetric, and also when this uh, noise has a simple, um, um, the noise, this noise uh, matrix is uh, the delta function. Okay? And in this case, we can show that uh, this first result can be simplified to give you this nice result. So basically, it's telling you that the interest, the quality of interest is Q is related to K0, but if you see here, it is related to the inverse of K0, okay? not directly with K0. So in this case, uh, only in this case, K0 will be enough, but you will see that the important quality to look at is actually the inverse of K0. So again, that's explained why if we people just use the, just, um, use the coherence itself, saying that a larger co correlation means a higher probability of length, that would be wrong. Okay? And in, we show this explicitly here. So now I'm going to, um, this is the, uh, a network, I will present uh, the NOCs. Uh, this, this, all these dots are the nodes, and the size will be, the larger the size means the larger the degree of the node, the larger the number of lengths connected from the nodes. And these uh, lines that you see there is the, the, the length. So that will be the, the original network we represent in this uh, visualization. And we are using uh, our method, just use the k inverse, okay? So from the result I just told you, if you focus on the case that tau n is small, so we'll just forget about the quadratic term and then they can directly get k0, I mean, directly get q from the k0 inverse. And this is the, using the k0 inverse, we reconstruct the network. You can see that they almost identify, identi identify with one another. So the reconstructed result has a nice resemblance of the actual one. But if you use the covariance itself, so this is just a usual way, if you use a Pearson correlation coefficient, uh, you know, that is proportional to the covariance, and you just say set some threshold, and if it's larger than some threshold, you said they, they, they might be they will be connected, and that's what you get. And you can see this is a large deviation from the actual network, and that will be another quality that people also use, so-called partial co co coefficient. I'm not going to into details, but you can also see that they are not as good. So our method using just the K0 inverse based on the mathematical result one in the case when it is simpler. Q is I mean the, mat the, the network is bidirectional. You can see we get a very nice result. 
But for general network, as I said, case zero is not enough. So, but this is what we are more interested in because most networks of interest are not uh, bidirectional but direct. So, for general network, we need both. We need to use the result two. So, it's both case k tau and case zero. So, that's the result two again here. But you know, I'm just going to tell you that uh, even for general case when tau n is not zero, we are able to get results. So, basically, we can from here we can get two results, and then we can uh, depending on whether we use uh, well, we can choose tau to be two tau or three tau, and then get to this result. And then we can solve q. Okay, so these are the details, but we can solve Q in this general case, and t, this T is, can be solved from these two equations. So again, K0, K tau, K2 tau can be measured or from, from be, can be calculated using the measure time series. So once we have case, the time series, we can calculate K0, K tau, and K2 tau, and then solve these equations to get T, and then from the T, and then we can so know that it is related to Q. So that is the uh, idea. And for, for, for the case of the, um, when, the, the, when tau n goes to zero, the, the, the white, white noise limit, then we can actually go through a simple path. So for the white noise limits, we have a simple result. So I'll just focus on this. So this is k tau equals to d tau q k zero. So we can just take the, the inverse of k zero and then you know, work it out and then take the um, log of the matrix. So there are some restrictions on when it will be unit, but we can work out the details of the mathematical condition. So basically, Q will be equals to the, the principal log of this combination. And again, K0 can be calculated from the data, K tau also, and then so the right-hand side is calculated from the data, and then we can get the Q. Okay. So I'm just telling you, so you may wonder when we can use the, the, the more general case and we, when we can use the white noise limits. So we also uh, has devised a, a, a measure to, to from the data, you can extract from the data whether the data tell us that the, the white noise limit is a good approximation or not. And depending on that, we can either use the white noise result or the more general uh, finite correlation time result. But uh, no matter what, we get this M. M can be either this simple case for the white noise or a more complicated case for the correlated time. But in both cases, we are able to get this M. And the important, again, an important thing again is M is expected to be close to Q uh, based on the mathematical result. And Q, again, the off-diagonal elements will be proportional to the GIJ, AIJ that we are interested in. So let's focus on that. So now we calc using the procedure, we can calculate this M. And we look at the off-diagonal elements. Since it uh, is expected to be proportional to GIJ, AIJ, so they should form into two groups. They should separate into two groups, depending on whether AIJ is one or zero. Well, remember AIJ is one, meaning that I and J are connected. If it's zero, they are not connected. And so we, would, we, we perform a clustering um, analysis to separate the data into two groups. And in particular, we use this Gaussian mixture model. So we, we look at the distribution of all these uh, data, the off-diagonal elements of MIJ, and then we fit them by a Gaussian Gauss, mixture of two Gaussians. And then the Gaussian with the mean closer to zero will be taken to be um, correspond to the AIJ equals zero. And the other group will be AIJ equals to one. And you may wonder whether why we, we uh, use a Gaussian. But you know, if theoretically, it should be just a uh, delta function, well, because it's, it's when AIJ is zero, you expect it to be peak at zero, uh, just peak at zero with a delta function. But obviously, in the, in the presence of noise, it's more complicated. It will be spread out, and usually it will spread out like a Gaussian. And so we just make, take advantage of that, use this uh, Gaussian mixture model. And further, furthermore, we are not only we um, not only can we uh, can our method reconstruct the AIJ, we can also get the GIJ uh, when this uh, function h, which rather general has additional properties. So if this x sub y is uh, actually constant, you can directly use this ratio to get the, the gij. So these are the details, but you know, depending on uh, if x y or only depend on y, you can get the, this outgoing length, uh, the coupling strength. And if x y only depend on x, then you can get the incoming coupling strength. So the message here is we not only will we be able to get the aij, we can also get the gij or a relative, relative gij. So we check our method uh, using first using numerical data, so uh, numer uh, numerical data uh, generated from uh, different kind of networks and different kind of dynamics. So we have stu studied uh, directed weighted, net uh, weighted random network, directed um, weighted uh, sim scale free network, and also uh, the undirected one. And the number of nodes we start with, uh, the, weight, the random network we, we use n equals to 100, and for the scale free network we will use 1,000. We can actually try more. So these are just uh, also the um, 
the coupling strength can follow, uh, we choose to follow a, a Gaussian distribution, or in a scale-free network, we can also choose it to be a power law. So, so some are power law, some are Gaussian. So different kind of network with different uh, coupling strength distribution. And for dyna dynamics, we have studied different kinds. So we have studied uh, nonlinear logistic function, and also some um, different co coupling functions, like a simple one with some of this linear diffusive kind of uh, coupling, or more like, uh, like a synapse in the neuroscience is this kind of uh, uh, hyperbolic tense uh, kind of coupling. So, and, and we also look at, uh, well, we also look at cases that are beyond our, our, our um, derivation. So, actually, we uh, uh, look at this, for example, this nonlinear Wasser dynamics. In this case, each node will have three variables, x, y, and z. And they're coupled in this way, and it's nonlinear. In, in this case, actually, we thought the noise is uh, chaotic. So, but we, we, we will just, uh, this is more complicated, but we will imagine we only look at x, i, t again one variable of, the, uh, of each node and try to reconstruct the GIJ, AIJ. So another, another model is the so-called Fischer-Nagomo model. It's a model usually people employ for uh, excitable media. So just, just try that. So this is beyond our description because this is now not only uh, one state variable but more than one and also the, uh, it's more complicated. And we also study cases that the, well, the, the correlated noise is not a constant. Well, in the derivation, we, ass we assume it's a constant so that we can get the result. But just to try how far the method go, we also try something uh, beyond the, the derivation. So this is how and I uh, depend on the node and the uh, uniform distribution. Anyway, so the, just we have tried different kinds. And this is a table summarizing the, the result. So basically, this is different cases we study, different network, different dynamics, and whether this is uh, white noise or uh, very small tau n. And this delta is just to tell us which method we should use. Remember, we are trying to use this measure. We can calculate from the data. If it is smaller than some value, we should use the white noise um, limit. We, if not, we have to use the full uh, correlate, uncorre, uh, correlate, time, correlate time method. But in any case, so these are the more important thing is here. So this is the, 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 the error rate. We try to we measure the accuracy of the me method by these uh, two error, error rates. So false Fn is the false negative. So False negative means well, is there's no length. Uh, there's length, but we just miss miss it. So it's a false negative, and FP is a false positive. So there's a no length, but we said there's a length, so it's false positive. And we normalize the measured area relative to the number of lengths, the actual number of lengths in the in the network. So these are two error rates, and you can see that in all the cases that we study, um, they are well, they're mostly below uh, 10 percent. There are cases that are larger, and in this case we we have to run longer, okay? And then we see that we, we, we need longer data set to get a better result. So the so method works rather well. Uh, and also it works also for the additional cases. And we can also reconstruct the relative coupling strength. So again, the, the quantity uh, G will be the, the, the coupling strength normalized in, in a certain way I explained earlier. And with head is the one that we co reconstruct from the, using our method and the one with now with the original GIJ is the actual one. So I'm plotting here the reconstructed coupling strength, or relative coupling strength versus the actual value. And if this is a perfect reconstruction, it will be a straight line with lying on the diagonal line. But you can see uh, we're doing pretty well. They're scattered, they're, they're errors, but in general, we, we capture the, the features. And actually, if you look at the distribution function of the reconstructed uh, coupling strength, they match rather well with the original one. And moreover, we can actually even get information about the noise. So we can also reconstruct the noise uh, covariance matrix. And again, you can see if the good, the quantity with a head uh, is a reconstructed quantity. And you can see again, that, you know, in some cases it's scattered quite a lot. But I mean, most of uh, that cases we know it will be when the tau n is larger. But again, just to tell you that we can get some information about the noise covariance matrix. So that. So we have we, we, this method now for the case that we know all the nooks, all the nooks i from one to n. So next thing I want to talk, talk about it will be, well, obviously in natural uh, in real world problems, we sometimes we don't even know what are the all the nooks, right? We 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 might not know the system that well. We want to we just measure some. Well, there are two situations. One is we don't really know whether what are the all the nooks. So. We miss out some. The other is maybe we know them, they are there, but somehow we cannot measure their, their, their time series. So in any case, they are so-called hidden nodes. 
Notes that are either not measured or uh, their, their time series are not measured or for whatever reason. Okay, so now we want to know how, uh, suppose I apply the method without knowing that, what, what will we get? Will we be complete disaster? Will it be just something totally off or will we still get some information? So for this problem, again, this is a very complicated problem. We want to know what is uh, the hidden nook effect, right? So we first attempt to answer this uh, question using the, the, the simple case, the bidirectional network. Okay, so you, you might recall that for bidirectional network and for the simple case of the diffusion, this diffusive light coupling, we can actually get uh, information. Uh, remember the important quality there will be the K0 inverse, the inverse of the covariance matrix, and that will be related to Q. So in this case, we can actually uh, work this out. This is when we know everything, this is this. And um, so now the, the problem of interest will be, suppose the network, the, the full network has N nodes, this big N but we only measure the small n of the them. Only measurements of small n, which is less than big n, are available. So f just for simple, uh, you know, how, how me to describe it, it's simpler. I just rename this uh, measured time series by yi in to distinguish it from the general xi. So suppose this measured, I have only small n, uh, which is less than n, big n, nooks that are measured. So I, the measured time series will be this yi. So the question of interest is, can we still get information about the links among these measured nodes using this yi, t, the time series of the, the measure time series only? Uh, the answer we will see is, so we can actually work it out. I mean, so basically we can use the full equation and then now we just separate the, the matrix into, into the block matrix because one will con contain information of the measure part and the other will be so-called the hidden part. The hidden part is the, the, the nooks that we are not measured. And then, so the full K0, uh, now I just renamed them to K just for simplicity of notation. And so the full uh, K0 or K will consist again of this block, right? This KM will be the, the covariance matrix of the measured nooks. And this KH is the covariance matrix of the hidden nodes, And the U will be the, the, the hidden and the measured covariance. But in any case, I just work it out. And you can actually work it out. And s finally, we can actually get a nice result. Excuse me. So basically, we find that the measure, if we just use the measured covariance, the nooks, okay, the measured covariance matrix among the measured nooks and take the inverse, you can easily see that this is not just related to the um, network information of the measured nooks, but there will be terms due to the co hidden nooks. And in this case, actually, we can work out explicitly what they are. So the, the, um, the, the quantity in red will be the um, the effect of the hidden nooks on the measured, uh, the, the, the inverse of the covariance of the measured nooks. And this um, quantity, this effect of the hidden nooks can be I mean, summarized in this matrix C. So this contains this uh, free, uh, the product of three matrices. So first is this E. E, what is E? E is actually the, the connection between the hidden and the, and the missing node, the, this matrix here. And so this H, LH will be just related to the hidden nodes. It's exactly the, uh, well, L exactly is this uh, Lagrangian matrix you can construct from the uh, adjacency matrix. So basically, you just uh, get the, this quantity. It's the, the hidden nodes and also the relation between the measure and the hidden nodes. And if you go through this, you can see that this C, I, J will be, well, essentially, I can understand the result like this. So if I just look at the measure nodes and calculate the covariance matrix, take the inverse, and if I, I will see that it is not just proportional to Gij, Aij of the measure nodes, but there will be a correction due to the hidden nodes. And this correction is summarized by this Cij. And you'll see that Cij, because I have the full expression, I can work out what it is. And in, in, in particular, we will see that Cij will be non-zero only when a, this measure nodes i and j are connected through a path containing uh, hidden nodes only. If this path does not exist, then Cij will be zero. Okay. So we can actually uh, try to use the expression to get what are the Cij. We can work it out. And basically, this is approximation. Uh, you can see the approximation will tell me that the Cij is uh, first depends on these three uh, factors. So the magnitude of Cij depends on three factors. First, how many such paths connecting the measure nodes uh, via this path containing only hidden nodes. If there are more paths of such kind, there will be more terms in your sum, and then you'll be, uh, the CIJ will be larger. So depending on the number of paths, and also the, you can see here this is this X S mu. S mu will be the strength of the hidden node. 
So the, the size of this CIJ depends on the path, number of paths, and also the strength of the hidden nodes, the S. And also this G, GI mu will be, well, I use the mu to denote the hidden nodes and the IJ to denote the, the measure nodes. So they will be uh, depending on the coupling strength between the lengths um, between the measure and the hidden nodes. Okay, so these quantities. But this is the important, in, the interesting observation will be, uh, first you can see from here, uh, the size of this correction is actually inversely related to the S mu, okay? So S mu will be the strength of the hidden nodes. Well, usually you may imagine that if you miss a node, the hidden node, is it, if it has larger, well strength here is, strength is just related to the um, degree, the number of connections, and also the, the, the coupling strength. So you, ima you might imagine that if, usually you expect that if you miss our hidden node, we'll have more degree, the larger degree, and also uh, coupling strength stronger, you will miss out more. It turns out that actually it's not the case. It is actually, uh, the S mu appear in the, in the denominator. So it's actually uh, rather interesting to see that uh, larger nodes with larger strength meaning larger degree or larger coupling strength, actually gives rise to a smaller correction. Moreover, you will see that although you, know, you, this, you have this correction due to the hidden nodes, but if this correction, CIJ, remember this is the result. If CIJ is um, comparable for both the measure nodes that are linked or not linked, actually you will not affect the reconstruction result. So basically, what this is what I'm going to tell you. So if these three factors are comparable for two groups of either connected or unconnected measure nodes, then you, although there's a correction there, but because we want, remember we want to separate the two groups and they just uh, shift uh, the same amount, so it just does, uh, does not affect the separation. So basically this is what I'm showing you here. So if the, the, the measure, the hidden nodes are randomly or unpreferentially linked to the measure nodes, although they are corrections due to the hidden nodes, they don't really affect the reconstruction result. So I'm showing you here, the blue circles are the, this uh, um, K0, in, K, K0 inverse based on the whole network. So, you know, I, I use the, the whole, uh, all the big N nodes measurements and just focus on the uh, subset of measure nodes and study this K0 inverse. And the other one, this as triangles, are the one with the, this, just calculated from the measure nodes. And you see that they shifted. Okay, of course they shifted. And uh, the, the shifted amount is exactly the CIJ. So we, we, I show here also the dashed line, which is the theoretical prediction. I, I calculate CIJ from the data, I mean from the from the network, and I can see that they are, agree well with the triangles. So they shifted, but st although they shifted, but they are still separate into two groups. You can see they separate into group one uh, close to zero, the other close uh, just uh, other group. And again, we can identify the group close to zero to be the unco unconnected uh, links, unconnected uh, measure nodes, and the other group will be the measure nodes. So in this case, the error doesn't, uh, it increases a little bit, but doesn't um, affect us to get the information from the data. So, so that's the result for, uh, we tried to test this using a random network of 100 nodes, and then randomly remove nodes from there to so hidden nodes. So n actually is the number of hidden nodes. We try uh, 10 hidden nodes, 30 hidden nodes, 50, 70. So even 70 hidden nodes, we only get uh, you know, 70 amount, 70 percent amount of the nodes are not known. And we can still reconstruct the, data, uh, the, the remaining 30 nodes, the length among the 30 nodes rather well. So you can see that the error rate increased just slightly. And these are different kind of dynamics. So if the hidden nodes are just unpreferentially connected from the to the measure nodes, the method still gives you information. And in the case, we also try the case that uh, the hidden nodes are actually preferentially linked to some measure nodes, okay? So we try, in this case, is, uh, we just take 30 hidden nodes, and these 30 hidden nodes, we just directly, I mean, just preferentially link them to the measure nodes that are con unconnected. And you see that the, the, uh, uh, this is not shift too much, but this is, this is modified. Okay. Again, the blue one will be from the whole information of the whole network, and the triangle will be just from the measure nodes. And you'll see that uh, this is this shift amount will be uh, not not the whole group of data shifted by the same amount, but only some data will be shifted, and this will cause your error. So in this case, indeed, the, um, we have more a higher percentage of false positive, but on the whole, we still get some information from the uh, construction from the measure nodes. Okay, so that was. 
the, to summarize this part is, with hidden nodes, obviously, it is a much more uh, difficult task. But it turns out that if the hidden nodes, if it is unpreferentially connected to your mesh nodes, you can still use the method to get the reconstruction pretty well. If it is preferentially connected, then you probably get a uh, larger error rate, but I, we, we, still, the method gives you some information. So that gets me to the final part. We apply our method to a real uh, world problem and try to reconstruct the networks and see whether our method can really work well. So this is not a mathematical modeling anymore. So this is, we don't even know what are the dynamics in this case, okay? So what the, the, the model that we, we I mean, the, day, the network that we are interested to reconstruct is the following. So it is a, a network of neurons. It's a neuronal network. So really the neurons, is, uh, is the, these neurons are taken from a um, red, a red embryo and uh, the, in the cortex and then put in this um, detector. This is so-called multi electro array. So neurons, when they have um, activity, they will send out this uh, voltage. This is action voltage. So people can measure the voltage as a function of time. So voltage as a function of time will be our time series uh, for, the, for the network. And this the data, we, well, we, did, we, we did not do the data, uh, the measurements ourselves. We, the data were uh, taken by our collaborator, uh, uh, C.K. Chen's group in Academy Sinica in Taiwan, and for, by the student, the patient student. So this is just uh, to tell you, you know, this have, you have a array. Uh, this array, there are 4,096 detector channel. Okay, 4,096 channel uh, can measure, uh, take data from 4,096 uh, channel uh, simultaneously. So in a way, we have about four, more than 4,000 nodes. So we look at all this, this, this is just a sort of subset. So uh, for each channel, you can study the, the, the time series as a function of time. So it's a voltage as a function of time. You can see sometimes you call it, see these large uh, so-called spikes. This is the action potentials. So each of these electrodes, in this case, they are looking at, a, we, they calculate the uh, density of the neurons they, they plant on this um, um, array. So from that, we can calculate how, so each electrode will, uh, will receive a f only uh, input from a few neurons. So they are not individual neurons we are looking, but we can think of them as a sort of composite, but they will be just a few neurons, so that's important. So then we are not claiming that we are in consulting individual neurons, but we, we, cost, we are consulting a network that are, are at most a few neurons form a unit, okay? And in this case, of course, neurons, the, the, the synapse, they, they communicate through the synapse, and these synapses are directional. So we have a directed network, uh, and also the coupling string will be non-uniform. And so we take each electro as a one node. And so there will, there, as I told you, there are 4,096 channels, but one channel is used for uh, uh, calibrating something. So only the 4,095 channels are measuring data from the system. So we have 4,095 nodes. And this is the, the, not a too small matrix to work with, and we apply our network. We try to reconstruct the directed network from these voltage measurements. And so, and that's the uh, situation. For, for neurons, you, 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 you want to know what. Neurons will be essentially either excitatory or inhibitory. So a neuron sends message down to the, to the, the neurons uh, downstream, but it can uh, send out signals to tell them to, tell them to uh, enhance the, their uh, activity, so it's excitatory. Excitatory means the coupling string is positive for us. Inhibitory will be negative, okay? So it can be excitatory or inhibitory. So that's the main thing we, we're trying to trust. Because we're only dealing with individual neurons, we, we think that we can also treat the individual node as either excitatory or inhibitory. So we focus on the outgoing links. So this is a MIJ we, we construct using the method we, I described earlier. And I look at the distribution. You will see the, the gray, gray, grayish line are the distribution. And you can see from here, you, you can see that they in, in, indeed form two groups. And the red and the blue lines are the fit from the Gaussian mixture that we, 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 we fit. We fit the distribution by two uh, Gaussians. And you can see they fit pretty well. And here, we have these two groups. So we also make use of another assumption that the neuron, the, this network is sparse, meaning that uh, most, the links are not, the links are not uh, uh, frequent. So we, we will take the, the separate into two groups. The groups of more the data point will correspond to the unconnected one. And so in this case, you see that this is an unconnected one, and the other one, the red one, will be the connected one. And 
for example, in, the, in this particular case, the connected uh, nodes, the MIJ will be um, more negative than than the uh, the unconnected group. So in this case, we are we cons this outgoing lengths are inhibitory. The coupling strength are negative. And for the other case, we will see that this larger group correspond to the unconnected uh, group has a, a smaller coupling strength compared to the other. So this is a, a excitatory length. So simply put, we can actually infer whether, the, because it's either excitatory or inhibitory, we can infer the length this way and get the, the, whether the, the, those one. Okay, so, so and this is just to say we, we construct the network and when we get the uh, information, uh, the num the, because in, in, in newer sciences it's interesting uh, so-called excitatory and inhibitory balance because you cannot have only excitatory uh, lengths, otherwise you over excited, but you also have some inhibitory to balance. So we, we construct and then we look at, well, I'll just summarize because I'm running out of time. So anyway, these are the, we have looked at different um, data, data, data sets. So you plan the, you, the, the experimentalists plant the, the, um, the, this nuance into the, um, the electro and they start, they can actually stay there for a while, they live for a while. So this DIV is the days in ritual. So the first day they plan is day, day one. So they're uh, 11 up to 66, so they can live for uh, one to two months. And these are the information we can get the connection probability, all this uh, information, whether they're uh, the average path length, the clustering coefficient, and whether they're small well. And when we compare to the only one neuronal network available uh, by measurements, which is the C. elegans. It's a worm. It's a, this is the one people have really measure using microscope. Look under the microscope, look at the new one and track the, the connection. Uh, this is the only one uh, new one that is being mapped by measurements. And it takes, it took, uh, I think it took more than 10 years, many men power, okay? So this is the C elegance. And we compare them and then we can get similar information. And then, then we can also get uh, coupling strength. So basically I told you I can get the coupling strength. So we also get the over coupling strength. And this is the interesting thing, we find, we find that they are not normal uh, distribution. So the outgoing coupling strength, they are not normal. And this is actually in agreement with uh, people, what people find using experiments. They, they look at a, f a few neurons, they, they put one, excite them with some current, and then study the response. And from the response, they estimate what is the excitatory coupling strength. And indeed, they find that it's not normal. This is itself a, a, a mystery to understand why it is not normal. But the, quest, the, the message here is more that our method we construct this coupling strength and then it is in, in agreement with uh, measurements. So, so, and then we also find something that is not reported in the literature. We find that not always not normal, but sometimes taking the log, it's more like an exponential, it's more like a power law. But in any case, so, so this is uh, actually still ongoing. And final thing is we can actually also use our network we constructed to, to predict the spiking rate of the neurons. So uh, we can actually separate them into two groups. One group is a high spike rate, the other is low spike rate, and then we, we use the method to predict which one is which one. And you'll find that we get very, pretty well uh, uh, prediction accuracy. So we, just both the sensitivity and the specificity is around uh, 80%. So let me just summarize uh, what we had told you earlier. So we have, based on the model uh, class of network, with the, the, we can derive uh, mathematical results, and using these mathematical results, we have developed a method that can reconstruct uh, general directed, un, uh, directed network with um, directed weighted networks in the presence of white or correlated noise. And but in particular, more recently, we have applied our method to reconstruct this uh, real world data, uh, real world network in, in, in vitro neuronal network, and it is still ongoing, but then we find other interesting results. So, with that, I thank you for all your attention. Thank you for a very interesting presentation. Regarding the strength parameters, G, I, K, yes. uh, I assume they are constants throughout the simulation. Is that true? And well, they do, they do not depend on time. Well, we now in our derivation, but they are, they, are, they are not constant, meaning that they are not uniform. They are different for different IJ pair. I do understand. Mm -hmm. So for each pair of nodes, there is a G, I, J. Would it be possible mm -hmm. to have Make your method still be valuable for analyzing dynamics of 
Well, they, they can definitely be seems depending on distance because I don't assume any, maybe this node can have different distance. They separate by different distance. So they can actually, in this particular final example, they also, we also have information about the uh, spatial distance. So there's, they can, this GIG can be this, uh, depend on distance if these nodes are uh, separate by different distance. So any pair of them, they have a GIJ. But this GIJ, depending on network, you can make it more complicated. So, but, so yeah. Well, uh, in the, but because we're assuming that this network is not changing in, time, in position. But if you have a network, you can imagine you can describe your network with they, they are you know, separate in this, it has some function of space. And so, you know, GIJ also corresponding function of space. They can be implemented in your description of the network. Thank you. I think we, we, we should discuss it. Yeah. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you.